Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. So the last episode, I made a big mistake and I wandered off into a swamp and got molested by plants. And uh, so I just, uh, well, we also got a good view of Max's abs. That was a absolutely mm, beautiful picture. Um, a lot of you loved it. <laughs> Video kind of blew up. Algorithm definitely blessed me on that one. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it and see just kind of other really horrible choices we could make. All right, here we go. Arm chain, you're up, and let's do this. All right. <clears throat> Seeing this makes me hopeful. It's like all my problems went away, even for just a moment. You have problems, Max? Everyone's got problems, Cassie and Jesus. Well, everyone... Yeah. Well, everyone does. Mine is just a bit complicated. He gazed upon the stars. Somehow the look in his stoic eyes seemed sad and gloomy for a moment. Assure him. Well, whatever happens, you know I'll be right by your side, Max. Thanks, pal. Are yeah, these all locations we can get? You sat there with you sat there with him until the sun had completely set. You gathered your things and proceeded to go with him. This reminds me of that giant crystal in the distance in photos of Final Fantasy XV. Like right off the shore, there's like a giant crystal. Really cool. Pretty pretty cool. Ooh, pretty. You talked with Max all the way to Alyssa's house, cracking jokes along the way where appropriate. The fireflies were out and helped illuminating the way back. As you got closer to home, you could smell something delicious wafting from the kitchen. Your stomach began to rumble. Max chuckled and gave your head another pat. You blushed, breaking from his touch and ran towards the house, leaving Max behind for a moment. Welcome home, dear. She greeted you warmly. Ah, I see you've brought the herbs I've asked for. Her smile grew brighter as she looked into your satchel. Ah, well, there's mushrooms too? Oh, Cassian, you know you didn't have to, dear. You felt warmth as Alyssa gave you a hug on the side. It felt really nice, even though it was just a brief hug. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm afraid these aren't the ones you really wanted, ma'am. Sheepishly, you nudged your way out of her embrace. Nonsense! These are just as valuable as the herbs, if not more! I hope you did not think of venturing that far into the forest, Cassian. That place is very dangerous, and like I said, I don't want anything bad happening to you, young man. Uh, understood, ma'am. Now, come in. Dinner's ready for you both. God, this woman and her amazing cooking. She really is this game's tutorial. <laughs> you can see a bunch of roasted quails behind her. You felt like digging into those dishes right away, but she stopped you on the way, reminding you to go wash up before eating dinner. You protested a bit, but eventually you gave in, whimpering as you went. All right, all right. You can eat first, Cassian. Like a child, your ears perked up as you rushed to the tables, your tail wagging endlessly along the way. Uh... Uh, 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 at least wash your hands first, young man. Uh, okay, ma'am. I'll go wash up first, then. You cleaned the dirt off your hands and sat at the table, taking two quails onto your plate. Don't forget to save some for Max. You nod to Alyssa before delving in. Max returned after quite a while and ate his portion. After finishing the meal, Alyssa told you to go wash up and rest up, as tomorrow would be quite the long journey. Hmm, I saw that bulge there, Max. You went to the bathroom as Max stated to discuss the plans for tomorrow with Alyssa. You washed up for a bit before stepping into the hot bath. The hot water immediately soothed your tense muscles. You rested your back against the tub, dozing off after a moment. When you really came to, you stayed there for a bit before stepping back out and, and back out and dried up. You dried yourself with a towel after shaking the water off your fur, wearing it as you left the bathroom. The kitchen was dark and empty as you passed by. M maybe they're all asleep already? This game has taught me that anything can happen at any given moment. You slid into your bed after putting on your underpants. Your mind was already drowsy from a day of hard work, and yet somehow you felt restless. Tomorrow is a big day, and you couldn't help wondering what kind, what kind of people were, and what sort of adventures awaited you in the city. You drifted off to sleep after pondering for a while. Hmm. Oh, he's gonna have weird dreams again? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe not. Oh, okay, I, I guess not. Are you sure you really have to go, Cassian? You looked to Alyssa as she spoke. She seemed sad, even though she was smiling. Well, you're the one who said I needed to go to the city, ma'am. For safety and to receive training and all that. You replied, going over your luggage one last time before moving to the front door. Ah, oh, you're right. I just... You could feel Alyssa softly caressing your hand as she said, I'd hoped you would perhaps stay for just a little longer. Oh, believe me, I would like that. But, uh, but, Bunny Mom, we have places to go and people to see. Things would get lonely here without you two around. But, ma'am, he muttered as she leaned in for a hug. Oh, I'm going to miss you both. 
You could hear her sniffling ever so slightly under the under the embrace. You made sure to hold back your own tears. You've only been there for two weeks, and yet somehow it always it already felt like years. Well, don't worry, ma'am. We'll come visit you when the time is right. You walked towards the dirt road where your vehicle awaited. There was a traditional ah hair in my mouth. Jesus, it's on my tongue. Get it off. It was a traditional horse-drawn carriage, only that it was hovering with two of those weird beast creatures hauling the entire thing. You've actually taken a closer look at them after taking a while to muster up your courage. It turned out that they weren't really that hostile. They looked very strange, but somewhat like a mix of horses and wolves at the same time, which you still found very intimidating. Max was at the front, sent tending to said creatures at the front. Go on and put your stuffs in the back, Cassian. All right. You hesitantly left Alyssa's side, keeping a close eye on those creatures. Are you sure those things won't bite me? First off, they're called Hulf, Cassian. And second, if you handle them well, they won't bite you. Much. Max smirked as he turned to the holves. The growling noises they, they made still freaked you out a bit. Max didn't seem to mind it one bit, though. In fact, they seemed to be fooling around with him, even, like pets with their owner. You opened the carriage door and placed your luggage inside. The holves gave you a suspicious look. Gah! One of the beasts growled at you as you went back to the front, and you tripped and fell, trying to move away. Ma'am, are you actually sure he's the hero? Max sighed as he looked at Alyssa. Well, come what may, he still has a long journey ahead of him. Of that, I'm certain. And this would be where you come in, yes? Under, I understand, but alone? I can't just be his personal babysitter, ma'am. Well, I know you might not want to hear this, but... Alyssa whispered hesitantly. Perhaps you could call on them for help? Max stared at her for a moment. He seemed to give the idea some consideration, but it was clear he didn't like it one bit. I don't know, Alyssa. I... Max seemed reluctant, but Alyssa was quick to hush him. Just give him a chance, for all our sake. All I know... Oh, what is that? Oh, all I know things have been a lot different over the years, but together I believe you can pull this off. Alyssa then gave him another head pat and a gentle scritch on the, his chin. Even afar, you could see him wagging his tail. You chuckled to yourself. A shame your phone had already died by then. This would have been a nice moment to immortalize. Already, Max! You decided to call them after a moment. Okay. Well, I guess this is it. Alyssa smiled as you... As Alyssa smiled as you... Blah! Alyssa smiled at you and her... And, ah, I'm sorry. Alyssa smiled as you and her joined in a full-on embrace. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you for everything. If you hadn't found me in the forest and looked after me, I don't know where I'd be right now. Don't mention it, dear. Just make sure you take care of yourself. You can feel her hand running along your head fluff before you giving you the same the same chin-scritching treatment Max received. You savored the embrace for a while. Her touch really soothed your troubled mind, as always. Remember to eat well and train hard. Keep at that, and I'm sure you'll become the greatest hero this land has yet to witness. Understood. I won't let you down, I promise. As the embrace parted, you, hoped and you hopped onto the carriage. Max was already seated at the front, and you could see him waving to Alyssa. Until next time, Alyssa. Until next time, boys. Safe travels. Ready to go, Cassian? He gave the cabin a final longing look before closing the door. Yep. Let's. Alright, giddy up. Max finally signaled the holes, and the carriage began to gain momentum. Alyssa's homestead soon faded into the distance. The scenery stayed the same, though. Just the ever-going tree lines and shrubs to your sides. You were still in the middle of the forest, after all. At first you felt excited, but after staring at the same greenery for a few hours, you started to feel a bit bored. So, how was life before you came here? You felt like dozing off when Max spoke up. Perhaps he was just as bored. Hmm, as far as I know, I was a human before I came here. A human? What's that? It's like, how do I put it? Well, it's like you, but without the snout, fur, tail, and paws. What? Max looked at you in disbelief. I can't even imagine what your old self looked like. You must have looked so weird. Sorry, no offense, but compared to what you just described, you look way better this way. He chuckled, keeping his eyes on the road again. Well, thanks, I guess. He muttered, feeling flustered again. I was pretty average human back in my world. They said I have no parents, so I grew up in an orphanage. The caretaker said they found me on the porch one night without any trace of or whereabouts of the person that left me there. Whoa, life must have been rough, huh? Well, for the most part, it was okay. The caretaker is a good man. He can cook quite well, too, though Alyssa's cooking could beat it by a mile any day. You both chuckled, and you couldn't help feeling a bit hungry thinking about the delicious meals Alyssa prepared during your stay. And was it lonely growing up an orphan? Not exactly. I've made some friends in the orphanage, too. Since we don't have parents, we treat each other like siblings. We'd play together, go on field trips together, and go to the same school as well. School? Yeah, school. It's a place where young humans learn about the world and how things work. Ah, so just like the Academy, then. So, anything you wanted to know about our world? Uh, the Academy. Sure, let's do that. What is the Academy like? The Academy, same as your schools, is where people learn about the world. 
There are a lot of stuffs you can learn there. Magic, hand-to-hand -hand combat, alchemy, biology, etc. We've trained numerous mercenaries and scientists to reinforce our cities and join forces against the king. Wait, you can study magic there? You remember Alyssa saying something about everybody being able to use magic in this world. Well, yeah, once you're there, you'll receive basic training for combat and magic. So anything you wanted to know more? Uh, evil king. Oh, magic. Tell me more about magic. Well, magic comes from your own body. Each of us have something called affinities. Different people have different affinities. For example, I have ice affinities. That means I can that means that I can free that means that I can control ice and perform ice magic. I can conjure ice, freeze stuff and slow things down. Wow, that's so cool. No pun intended, of course. Huh. <laughs> well, I guess it is. But we need a magic crystal to channel our magic. Without it, we won't be able to conjure anything. I want to do magic, too. There's no magic back in my world. It's, it's just a stuff of fantasy and legends there. Everything works on scientific logic, which just seems boring to me. Everything has its good and bad, and magic is no exception. Sure, it might look cool and satisfying to conjure a fireball or to briefly control the gravity of your surroundings, but without proper control, it can very well become an agent of destruction. So anything else you wanted to know more? The magic crystal. You mentioned a magic crystal. What's that? I imagine that might be their version of a focus. Like a way for a magic caster to draw energy from a magical crystal or something. It's a special type of mineral that was discovered deep underground. There are two variants of magic crystals. One is for channeling magic and the other is for generating energy. Hmm. Technically there is a third type of crystal, but using it is forbidden. Uh, forbidden? Is it dangerous? You could put it that way. From what I know, it contains dark energy. You can use it to control and manipulate other living beings. It's very rare, however, and requires the user to have a potent energy reservoir to be able to use it effectively. So far, only the Evil King has been, has been seen using that type of crystal without any negative effect. So anything you wanted to know more? Evil King. So, I have heard quite a bit about this Evil King so far, uh, but who is he exactly? Hmm, it's hard to say. His true name is unknown to us. Nobody even knows where exactly he came from. Legend said that he was from a humble village far up north of the, far up north in this land, once upon the time when the nation has lived in peace and harmony. Then everything changed for the worse when he rose to power and ruled with an iron fist. He transformed everybody in his village into his subjects and plotted to do the same to other adversaries. So far he had already conquered a large part of this continent, and maybe one third of the world. Even when many people tried to stop him? Indeed, many powerful warriors, brave knights, and wise sages from many factions and nations have faced off against the king only to meet their unfortunate demise. Even our war against him has lasted for decades now. And somehow I would be the one to defeat him and restore peace and balance to the world. He chuckled at the jokeful remark, but Max didn't seem to be messing around this time. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Do we actually know what he looks like then? Hmm, I'd assume most people don't. Why? Have you seen him before? Actually... Kind of, but it's... I'd rather not talk about it again. The thought of those nightmares made you shiver a little. Max, on the other hand, went quiet for a moment, before his tone grew solemn and you wondered what was on his mind. It was foretold by the sorceress of yore, when worlds collide, comes forth our salvation. Under his blade and might, the evil king shall fall, and soon follows suit his undying reign of tyranny. Only then shall freedom come to us all. Whoa. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure which version of this Miss Alyssa told you, but if the prophecy is true, then fate of this land lies in your hands, Cassian. No pressure. Y yeah n no pressure indeed. Actually, that reminds me. Do you need to recite that? You do need to recite that quite a lot if you take those study classes. Uh, oh, jeez, really? I'm sure, oh, surely, I hope not. <laughs> but of course. So anything you wanted to know more? Eh, nothing else. Hmm. I guess that's all for now. You feel like you've learned quite a lot of new stuff just from that conversation. You decided to change the topic and chatted with Max for a few while before a few well, for a few for a while before you felt drowsy again. Sleepy? Max looked to you as a yawn escaped your lips. H yeah. Hmm. You did get up early after all. Get some shut eye. I'll wake you up when we arrive at the city. Uh, okay, thanks, Max. You curled up along the side of the side of the seat, using the cushion as a pillow. You remember sleeping on those old buses when you were younger. The carriage wasn't as spacious, but it sure didn't take it didn't shake as much. And aside from the wolves from the hooves occasional howling, this was far more comfier. You let your mind wander for a while longer as you slowly drifted to sleep. Oh, whoa, what's this? Oh. <laughs> you forced a yawn as you came to. It was quiet. He must have slept for a while. But Max? You grunted, rubbing your eyes for a moment. No response. Oh, shit. Hello there, normal people. You looked around yourself. Even under your blurry eyes, something tells you you weren't on the carriage anymore. I I I'm at school? 
You gave your furry arm a light pinch, which didn't do much other than earning a yelp from you. You quickly covered your mouth, expecting everyone in the classroom to have their eyes on you, but they didn't seem to notice. They must be too busy paying attention to whatever the teacher was on about. What, was all this just a dream? You sighed, rubbing your eyes some more just to make sure you weren't seeing things, when you noticed the teacher approaching. You recognized him almost instantly. He was the professor that always wore that old trench coat around the, around the school. Judging by the numbers on the board, he, was, he probably was teaching either math or physics, but for whatever reason, his name had just eluded you. Uh, um... You forced a smile as the professor stopped before your desk. Even though he was up close, his face seemed a little blurred out. Oh. Okay, let me see if I can... Enjoyed your nap, Mr. Cassian. He gave you a stern look before eyeing the content on your desk. You know how I deal with students that doze off in my class. But I'll let you off with a warning this time. Only because you've done re you've done decently on the last exam. Th thanks, sir. Hmm. You felt your heart almost skip a beat as he gave you a weird look. The finals are just a week away, Mr. Cassian. Were I you, I'd stay extra focused. And put away your philosophy books, if you please. I'm afraid they won't help you much against these equations. Uh oh! You heard some scoffing among the other students as the teacher returned to the board. You felt like this couldn't get any more embarrassing. Though they went quiet again as the lesson resumed, you looked at the wall clock, which read two in the afternoon. Looks like it's going to be at least a few hours before the session ended. You swapped out the textbooks from the rucksack at your feet, then tried to haphazardly note down the professor's explanations. S something something about using a theorem to denote something about matrices? Well, what does any of that even mean? You tried to keep up, but after a moment you just stopped. You could have sworn at being half-decent at the subject, and yet you couldn't understand a single word beyond that. <sniffs> Nothing in your notebook made sense, either. All these numbers, lines, and symbols, almost as if all of it was written in some kind of language you couldn't understand. This is boring. You sighed, taking your eyes off the notebook. Maybe you're just having one of those days where nothing made sense. You decided to look outside. It was another sunny day, and the view seemed rather familiar to you. It was the city you grew up in, after all. What? What is that? A purple structure loomed in the distance. It looked like a giant spire, casting shadow over the entire city. Its obsidian spikes seemed to poke through the surrounding skyscrapers. It looks so out of place, and yet at the same time, you can't shake the feeling that you've seen it somewhere before. Mmm! <clears throat> you snapped back to the board as the teacher cleared, it, cleared his throat. You could feel some of your classmates staring at you. This is probably one of the most embarrassing days you've ever, had in, you've ever had in school. When the lesson resumed, you looked through the windows again. The massive structure was nowhere to, nowhere to be seen. Oh! <laughs> After what felt like an eternity, the school bell finally rang. You left the classroom in a heartbeat. Hey! Gassian! A familiar voice called you from behind. Oh, hey, um, uh... It was your childhood friend. You could recognize his casual wear and his messy hairstyle anywhere. You remember him well from all the times you spent together in the past to when he asked for your help for his homework recently. But just like everyone you've met today, his face was rather blurry and you couldn't for the life of you figure out what his name was. What's wrong? Did you pull another all-nighter? He asked, giving your shoulder a light punch. Ha! <laughs> of course you did. Been reading more stuff on F6, haven't you? F6. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I what now? Well, I know I would. Binged through several albums though the other day. Good stuff. I can show you. I can show you some sooner or later if you want. Yeah, m maybe not. I don't want to get into trouble being caught asleep in class again. He stole a glance at the elderly professor passing by the stairwell. Oh, him? <laughs> Relax, Cassian. You know how he is. All barks and no bite. What he said made you cringe for some reason. Well, um, don't you notice anything different about me? Different. Hmm. He took a good look at you from top to bottom. The only weird thing I see is how much your eyes sag. Maybe get some proper sleep tonight. Uh, oh, uh, okay. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I gotta go. Catch you later. Um, yeah, uh, bye. You lagged behind as your friend left. Somehow you felt sad. Perhaps for the first time ever you felt lost in the same city you've spent most of your life in, as if you didn't belong here to begin with. What is going on? Nobody seems to notice I'm no longer human at all. You thought to yourself as you left the school, taking the first road towards your rented apartment. Maybe it's for the better. I, I was never meant to be the hero type after all. Well, at least I can still keep this body. You wagged your tail at the, ex at the exciting prospect. You thought of all the cool things you could do with this new furry self. Huh? W what? Suddenly the next step you took on the sidewalk became hollow. Ah! Damn it! Fucking vortex! And before you knew it, you already dove deep into the unseen chasm. You struggled and yelled, but soon there was nothing but darkness surrounding you. You feel like you've been falling forever. You can see the same silhouette looming over you. It was laughing hysterically. There was something about it that sent chills down your spine. H help me! 
You scream from the top of your lungs. You can see its maw growing wider and wider, engulfing your form the further you fell into the abyss. What? The figure spoke suddenly. H help! Wake up! What? Wake up, Cassian! Oh, shit. Oh, shit, that's a pretty cool-looking city. You shot up from the carriage seat. Max was still taking the front rein, and you could hear the hooves ha the, the hooves howl- the hooves howling. <laughs> you could hear the hooves howling in the front. We're almost there. Just about ten more minutes. <laughs> you leaned against the cushion for a moment, still feeling disoriented. You look even more tired than before. Bad dream? Max looked at you as he asked. You didn't say anything. Not that you didn't want to. You just didn't even know where to start. Speaking of the city, you have always been curious what it looked like up close. But you were still too groggy to enjoy the view, so you covered your eyes and waited it out. Alright guys, I'm going to save it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!